Test, test. Or Bruce Lasky, or there's so many layers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I will. We'll make it up as we go. Thanks. Test. Oh, Dave's not back there. Until, until Dave gets back at the console, we're not doing anything. <laughs> It's okay to be nervous because our slides just went away. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Hello, everyone. Whoa, sound level. <laughs> hey, I'll keep talking, Dave. All right. Susan, do you have a mic over there? I do. All right. We're in good shape. I hope everybody outside can hear us and um, say yes if you can. Yes. All right. <laughs> and, uh, and, and everybody in Cambodia, we're streaming this across, uh, across Facebook. So uh, a lot of our folks over in Cambodia have gotten up early in the morning because it's literally, I think, 6.30 in the morning there. And so they've gotten up to be able to, to, to watch the stream on this. So hello, Cambodia. Good morning.
try to get back. There we go. Get back. So, um, you know, I, I, just to, to start off, m many of you know about the Cambodia Project, about Sustainable Cambodia, but I thought it would be a good, a good opportunity to give a quick overview on both how we started, where we are, and, and why Cambodia. Um, uh, you know, of course, everybody knows the experience that Cambodia went through with the Khmer Rouge, which, by the way, in Cambodia is pronounced Khmer. Uh, it's spelled like you are familiar with Khmer spelling, Khmer, but it's pronounced Khmer. So when you hear some of our uh, uh, some of our Cambodians in some of the videos coming up speaking, they'll speak of Khmer Rouge, and they they're, they're speaking of the Khmer Rouge. Um, we uh, actually got started in Cambodia through Bruce Lasky, who is a Gainesville, uh, Gainesville guy, uh, went to University of Florida Law School, uh, graduated, was a public defender here, spent time traveling around the world, and as part of that landed in Cambodia, decided he wanted to start a small school there. And one thing led to another. We got involved in the small school and things have grown from there. And we'll tell you some of that story later because Rotary became a huge, huge part of this as it evolved. And um, the part of the country that we're, that we're really focused on is the central part of the country. It's the rural part of the country where you'll see a lot of the living conditions in the videos that are coming up. Um, uh, very, very difficult uh, lifestyle out there. Um, Susan, any, any other? Um, I do, I'm just so delighted all of you, thank you so much for coming and coming down to this great place on a Friday evening. I, it's just fantastic to, to see you. I think um, what I'm hoping we experience as a community tonight is that even though you may see daily life in rural Cambodia and it may look quite different from what it is to awaken in your lives, there's such connection on how people value each other and value their families and what they care about and how resilient they are and how they trust that good things can happen. So that's the, I'm hoping in this evening together that you feel that connection with people who are literally on the other side of the planet. And all of you help us fortify and inspire us to be a part of it, so we're most grateful. So the, um, uh, just a, a little bit of a focus on the Khmer Rouge. And again, we, we, you know, one of our founding philosophies in Sustainable Cambodia is that we are aware of the past, we learn from the past, but we focus on the future. And everybody in the organization in Cambodia knows that and understands it. Um, but nonetheless, learning from the past, the experience with the Khmer Rouge did leave the country, as, as you know, some two and a half to three million people out of a 13 million population uh, killed. Um, primarily those within education, um, anybody that had an education, anybody could speak a foreign language uh, was, was put to death, um, anybody that wore glasses was killed because you had too much exposure with the Western culture. So just a horrendous, horrendous thing and it put them back to literally kind of ground zero of civilization and as part of that there's a, you know, an incredible lack of food, a lack of water, um, displaced families as they were moved across the country to different places to, to try to resettle. Uh, obviously a, an incredible lack of education, especially in the adults. Um, malnutrition, uh, children caring for children. Uh, they, they literally, the siblings, as soon as they were old enough, would take care of the younger siblings and just didn't have time for school. Uh, kids had to literally carry water for miles and miles, often from a really terrible source in order to, uh, to be able to to keep the family in, in uh, what they needed. So the, under, the underlying premise behind Sustainable Cambodia is empowerment um, and basically empowering the families there in Cambodia to be able to change their own quality of life. Uh, as part of em, empo uh, the uh, empowerment model, we're really focused on it being self-sustaining. Um, <clears throat> so we don't just go in and give things to the families. It's all about the families being able to create a sustainable quality of life for themselves. And um, I think probably the best introduction for this is going to come from uh, a, a young man on our team over there at Sustainable Cambodia. We have, uh, number one, we're all volunteers from the international side. Uh, by our rules, we only have native Cambodians on our staff. Um, 
uh, the man you're going to meet in the next video is uh, Polin. Uh, he's our executive director. Uh, we originally hired Polin in as a computer teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to see as you go through these videos, many, many, many of our executive team started as children in our program and have now come back and are working in the villages as, as part of the, the management team. Uh, but Polin tells a great story himself, and I'm going to let him speak. My first name is Pauline, and my last name is Pan. I was born in 1982, right after the Khmer Rouge, but I was born in the country still not uh, in peaceful. I mean, my father and my mother just worked hard to, to keep the family survive. The family, uh, when I was young, they sick a lot. But even in malaria, sometimes diarrhea, the condition of the house that I live is not uh, healthy. I have to travel about five kilometers to have a bath because the family is not very healthy. I want to be a doctor, but it's a, a difficult exam to take. After I fail the exam, I just apply for uh, being a teacher. So originally I got the scholarship. Building the human resource in Cambodia is very important. A lot of people were killed in Khmer Rouge. A lot of human resource of Cambodia were killed. To build the country, you need educated people. And also education will help to keep the country and the world peace. I applied for a job with Sustainable Cambodia. Sustainable Cambodia work with the family uh, in rural area. And we try to help them to become you know, self-reliant through our program related to the water project, uh, agriculture, and especially education also. We're running our education as a supplement class for the student who from very poor family, and the family who cannot afford for their private class. Helping the children a challenge sometimes because the family still need the support. Some of them spend time in the morning, go for water, and then uh, arrive at school late. And so the, the quality education is go down. And sometimes they decide to drop out because they not stay on the same pay that the other students have. We decide to do community development program. And in the program we have agriculture project and water and sanitation project and income generation. So all of that will support the family to be healthy and then keeping the children in school to, to learn. We provide the filter, uh, also the clean water for them to drink. And also the rainwater catchment, we call it rooftop rainwater harvesting. It's a long word. We manufacture the filter and then we bring them to the village and install the layer. Seeing the students, you know, they grow from small grade until they pass the high school and then move on to the university and then they have a job. You know, without sustainable community support, I don't think this kind of thing happens in their life. So sustainable community change their life. Working with sustainable community is an opportunity for me to help others. I know that uh, people feel the same way that helping others will make ourselves kind of inspiring and Seeing uh, the problem that uh, I had in my childhood, I understand that uh, the difficulty that the family you know, had to get through. I, I have an opportunity to take action to help them, which I feel good also. So uh, Pauline is, yeah. Pauline, if you're watching in Cambodia, which I think you are, thank you. <laughs> and uh, Pauline's representative of the kind of people that are involved in the project on the Cambodia side. Um, if all of you had a chance to be transported there, 
you would absolutely adore them and love them. They are so they work so hard and they have incredible hearts. We we actually call it SC Hearts for Sustainable Cambodia. Um, it's a, it's an incredible group. Um, I'm also going to tie in Rotary here because many of us in the audience are Rotarians and um, and we just returned from a very, very large group uh, that visited over there. The Rotary has been a part of this project since we started. Rotary International, uh, the international part of Rotary is that it gets involved in projects like ending polio around the world and creating clean water for everyone around the world and projects like Sustainable Cambodia. It actually started, this is Tim Sorrell, from, who's now with the journalism school here at the University of Florida. Tim traveled over on our very first Rotary trip. And as a result of his being there, when he described to them that Rotary's motto is service above self, Cambodia is a bit of a Buddhist country, largely, and uh, service above self really resonated. And as soon as they heard it, they, they wanted to know more. And they wound up creating the very first uh, Cambodian, rural Cambodian uh, Rotary Club as a result of that. And, and from that, and you won't see all of it here, but there are now, I believe, 120 or more clubs around the world from Australia, Canada, the United States primarily, that are involved in the projects there. So they have really become a, a global force in, in helping this, uh, this project in Cambodia. Um, the program itself is based, as I said before, on empowerment, which creates sustainable change. And uh, the main thing I want you to see here is the two elements of it, community development and education. Polin mentioned both of these in his, in his video. Um, you can't have one without the other. Families can't afford to keep their kids in school if, they're, if they don't have income, if they're all sick all day long, if they've got dysentery going on, if their siblings are having to watch their younger siblings. They have to have sustainable incomes. Once they have sustainable incomes, they will keep their kids in school. When you have children in school and they go through and they graduate grade 12, they will go from having five or six children to having two children. It just happens naturally. So education is really the, the way that we solve everything in the world. Um, but to get to education, you have to have a comprehensive plan. Um, we work through village development groups. So each village appoints its own development group. Uh, through those development groups, they, they install clean water, uh, water wells, biosand filters. Polin mentioned these. These are great little uh, systems that provide biological filtration to the water in the villages so that they can get clean drinking water. Um, also, latrines. This happens to be behind one of the preschools, so it's a fancier latrine. Um, and, uh, and rooftop rainwater harvesting that Polin mentioned. Um, animal pass-on becomes a big part of this, uh, mostly working animals in the agriculture side. And from those working animals in the agriculture side, they're able to, uh, to do the kinds of things they need to be able to create the sustainable income from agriculture. And uh, most of our sustainability programs on the income side are based on agriculture. So with that as a quick overview, um, I'm going to go into another video.
a young group of people from the United States from the Westminster schools decided they, they had filming backgrounds and all of those qualities that you just saw, um, resilience, commitment, passion, leadership, strength, and they all went over to sustainable Cambodia to get to know us and made that, they made several films and that's one of them and they, they really told the story so well. I think, um, I hope you feel that you're a little bit in Cambodia right now. And yeah, we've been really blessed over the years to have so many volunteers from so many areas of the world. Um, and, uh, and Gainesville. <clears throat> including Gainesville, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so a lot of what, what was in the, the video that just went by was on the community development side. We're, we're going to talk a little bit about the education side now. Um, and, and just briefly, we, we start with preschools and community schools. And in those preschools and some of the community schools, we go with a hot meal program that's a protein-rich protein program, so the kids get a, a good start. What I want you to focus on is some, some of the kids that are literally this age in these photos will, in 15, 16, 17 years, be coming back, either going to university as scholarship students or coming back from university and working in the program in the villages. Um, There's Julie the, uh, Johnson. There's yeah, there's Julie in that in that photo and Woo! Susan. <laughs> <laughs> and we have uh, then we have a number of enrichment schools and these are typically about grade three or four through grade twelve. And when the kids uh, graduate graduate from grade twelve, then they get an opportunity to go into university. But the youth clubs are a really important part of this, and we're going to also have one of the youth club presidents speak with you right. in a little bit in a video. Um, the, youth club, the youth clubs really, really do an amazing job of building leadership in these young people. It's all about community service. They're based on rotary um, and, and just based on doing community ser service and school service. Um, and the university scholarships, all the university scholars also have a community service element of what they're doing. And I think probably half of our university scholarship students wind up returning to the villages and, and actually working in the programs. I love to sing songs. Uh, hello, my name is Bon Chien. You can call me Bon. I'm happy that I'm getting a, a good education from them, that I can study English and computer. To spend about, Cambodia really helped me a lot. Like for study, I don't pay the money for study. And before that, I cannot use a computer. I don't know what is computer. I never used it before, but now I can do it. When I was young, I didn't have anything for go to school. And after I go to study at SC, I have a bike for go to school. And after I have a bike, I have a pen to study hard, try hard. And now on, my dream is come true. Before, I am, was in the poor family, and they far away from school. And then Sustainable Cambodia also provide a class for the poor students from the, the poor family. And then they select me, and then I, I have the opportunity to be a student to study at Sustainable Cambodia. I'm really excited. Most of the children in the city they have a very good behavior, a uh, good English speaking uh, computer. When they go to the university, they get a job very fast, and it really helps their family, their family too, too. Uh, especially they, they will be a model for their sister or brother or the people around them. They will be a model so. Other student parents, they, they, they are very uh, keen to uh, convince or encourage their children to come to study as well because of the model. And they come back to, to, to have their community as well. Sustainable Cambodia have everyone to grow, grow up and have for sustainable Cambodia, have to teach, have the, the sharing for new generation. Most of my students, they they pass the 12 and they go to study at university and most of them they get a good job. My student is a wonderful student and now he's working in Phnom Penh and he's wonderful and he always call me and text me and chat me sometimes mm -hmm. and he always say thank you very much teacher for helping me because of you I have today. I have a new life. Mm -hmm. So much that I get from SC support me to study at university. 
and I got into it. I really love I play love sports too. Uh, most of the our student talent they they don't they didn't get any any education, so they are still living in poor or in bad condition in the family. So I think we all those children they get a higher education, they won't live in bad condition again. They can make a better change for their lives, and actually the society will be developed as well. When they go to university, their life changed. They get a job, a proper job. They can uh, earn money to support uh, themselves and their family. Sustainable community have er, have everyone a lot like me. The sustainable community helped me to have a study at university. So it's great for me to have a good job. I think maybe more good, uh, more than new generation will be quite like me, have a job. Yes. <laughs> when I grow up, I want to be a lawyer. When I grow up, I want to be a teacher because I want to teach students. When I grow up, I want to be a doctor because I can help my family and all the people in my country. Julie, is this amazing? You see these children opening up a book and reading together. Uh, there, I can absolutely tell you that Julie Johnson is in on every page of that book, helping the children to believe that they can do it and guiding their teachers step by step on how to introduce the uh, experience of reading and the meaning of words and the right timing. Julie refers to things as just right learning. It really, I hope that's thrilling for you. And Michael, I saw Petty, Michael and Kathy supported Petty King forever. And here he is back being a voice to tell the story. And Jenny, you, you saw Mali. Um, it's really fun. So, yeah, I love, happy. <laughs> so, um, the, the uh, <clears throat> uh, we're going to let somebody from the youth club speak with you now uh, on, on a video. Uh, just kind of leading up to that, the youth club is a really, really important part of the whole education program there. It's more than just getting an education. It's really about you know, learning about service above self, um, learning about how to want to make a difference in the world around you. And that generational change um, starts with kids like these, goes through the preschool and the nutrition program, um, through the training and learning that they get, self health and sanitation. And then as they get into the community schools, they build uh, camaraderie and, and uh, start to get the underpinnings of an education. Computer labs in the schools allow them to really expand. I mean, these kids have a great time. I don't know if you can tell <laughs> on computer. Um, they get to explore things that they never knew existed. In one of our early uh, interactions over there with our teaching staff, we talked about the universe, and they had no concept of what the universe was. And, and so now all the kids you know, get that, that expansive of, of an exposure. Um, that allows them to blossom, to grow. The young women in particular, a huge emphasis in our organization on, on the women. And again, that generational change, you just can kind of see that in the generations that are sitting here as they go up. Right. These two young ladies um, are in university now and are just really ready for it. They just step up to the mic and tell us what they're learning in school. Really wonderful. Hi. And, <laughs> and, then, and then youth club. You can tell that they have a little enthusiasm. <laughs> and so um, we're going to actually let the current president of Youth Club, who's in 10th grade, is going to uh, speak with come? you and give you a little, a little background on Youth Club. And these kids, hi, tell you later. Can you get more volume? Thank you. 
teach them and want, want them to know back so they don't have six anymore. My uh, main idea to join the youth club is to have the children and uh, to like to have the children and uh, to increase my knowledge about uh, social work and to be the volunteer. Uh, I know the Sustainable Cambodia Youth Club by the older generation when they are performing and from the school uh, school principal. Uh, I've been here in Youth Club for three years. Uh, I, I also know only the two projects about the uh, like the agriculture project and the education project. Uh, for education project, Sustainable Cambodia uh, have the uh, poor child to join the school for free and uh, we got some like library or computer lab or research. Uh, for the agriculture one, uh, they make the water tank to share the people in our community. <laughs> Now the youth club members come in on a Saturday, sometimes their only day off because they go to school. All of our children go to state school as well as Sustainable Cambodia. We really are a supplement enrichment program to, to make the most of their education provided by the state. And they organize themselves and they come in on a Saturday. What are our projects? What are our goals? They have a budget to manage and do very well with that. They make presentations. Um, I, I just can't tell you, hun, I say enough. And, and, and they made that video. <laughs> and yeah. And just made it this last week for you. And uh, uh, just to, to kind of roll through again on the education side, we're now in generation 14 of our university scholarships. And, and, those, and they have now created their own um, uh, alumni, oh, well, alumni club. club. And they are now sponsoring they kids did. themselves. Um, All by themselves. They yeah. had that was their idea. Nobody planted that idea for them. They came up with it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so just you know, wrapping up. We're in the final. Are we in the final minutes? Well, um, we are really focused on empowering young women equally with young men. You may have imagined culturally that there is a, a background of maybe sending your sons to school, but Sustainable Cambodia really emphasizes that for every young man or young boy who comes into our program, a young woman does too. And actually, our school population is heavily weighed now with young women, if, if we look at it, so that's a great thing. That's and great women thing. make super things happen in their communities. They, they really organize the families. They, um, they make sure these programs uh, become in the self-help groups. So women are strong. Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, just, just wrapping this up. <laughs> So this woman's uh, incredible too. Here, uh, women empowered, families, uh, families empowered, um, young people empowered, and I can tell you from all of the 78 Rotarians that went on the January and February trips with us that they're all really <laughs> inspired <laughs> when they're there. I, I, I invite all of you to come with us on a trip to Cambodia, or if you can't come with us on a trip to Cambodia, just let us know if you're gonna be going to Cambodia, and we'll arrange for you to be able to get out into the rural villages, meet these families, meet these kids, all across the, the central, central part of the country. You'll see a life unlike what you're used to. Richard, do you have the stories about the evolution of SC? Is there time for that? I, there's not, no time? Not much, we're, th okay. you know, our, our our dear musician friends that... Sure, sure, and, and have beautiful. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's really been an evolution in our learning. I, I just would love to have longer conversations about that, and we can, can do that. But this is our current school, and we, we um, lease this land, but the, it's so beautiful. 
it's just a wonderful place for young people to gather and explore life and have fun together and care for each other. And we started in literally um, a structure and you could see through the floors and it sort of leaned like this. We have <laughs> photos of it and just in the most modest way, all together with everyone's support have grown into something, I think, um, inspiring for everybody. So. It's, uh, it's quite a journey. Yeah, it, yeah, and and, and uh, I, I wanted to uh, both of us wanted to thank the musicians and everybody here at Hartwood for this evening. Um, th this what wasn't our idea to have a benefit for Sustainable Cambodia. It was uh, Earl and Mary, I think, and and Bob McPeak who first came up with it. Uh -huh. Thank you, thank you to all the musicians that are part of this. Um, the ironics, uh, Earl, Earl had set up a, a, a booth out here next to the Sustainable Cambodia booth. It has a lot of merchandise, what they call merch, apparently, in this, in this space. And, and, and they have literally said, whatever is there, if you, if you want something, take it. Just make a donation to Sustainable Cambodia. So all those thank proceeds you. are going into this project in the villages. So thank you so much to, uh, to all of you, all the musicians, okay, and to everybody John, here. Thank Cambodia. Yeah. Thanks thank for you, Cambodia. joining us, everybody. And, and we're going to leave you. We're going to leave you with one final uh, short uh, short video clip, and then um, uh, at intermission, we've got a little ten minute clip from a couple of the folks that were on the rotary trips with us in January and February, just describing all of that. And then I think there's a couple of minutes of video of the bamboo train when we're traveling on the bamboo train across the fields Very of Cambodia. Fun. So um, that'll be at intermission, and we'll leave you. Thank you. you said something? I've got Can another, you we've okay. just got the last little video. Thank you, everyone. I think we're ready for the music. <laughs> Woo!
someone at the mixing board. <laughs> A short, but I wasn't that short. Test one, two. Test, test. Okay, well, everybody knows that I talk too much, and our sound engineer needs uh, five minutes to have his dinner, his long postponed dinner. So this is an opportunity for us to get to know one another a little bit better, <laughs> talk amongst ourselves. Uh, so I'd like I, Billy. I'd like to introduce our our fierce, fearless band leaders, Earl and Mary Robbins. Good evening, good evening. I was hoping you were going to carry it. Well, I will. So th this is another Monk at Night show tonight. We've had several here, and uh, we got some more coming up. And I hope you come out and see these folks on May the 25th. We have Jody Beggs. Uh, we had Jody Beggs play here recently, and uh, not at Hartwood, but in town, and he's really awesome. And on June the 8th, we have Esty Loves, who is from Tampa and Clearwater, is going to come up here, and she's going to really rock the house. You've got to come out and see her on June the 8th. I promise you that would be a great show. This is Bob McPeak. <laughs> and he usually takes this time to tell us about uh, the room that we're in and the listening room. And uh, if you're a musician, this is the kind of place you love to come where the folks out there can hear and you can hear up here and it all makes it so that we're in this together. And there's some songs that we're going to be in this together with tonight too, so pay attention when that comes around. Uh, okay, well, wow, gosh, well, how many people are new to Hartwood here tonight? No. Uh, that's quite, that's, that's an unusual number. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, the number's kind of been going down because a lot of people that come here like to come back, so Hopefully you'll join that crowd. But indeed, as Earl was saying, um, this has been a recording studio that I opened, actually started my house called Mirror Image Studio, and I moved it down here in either 1980 or 1981. Who can remember that far back? Um, and Hoch Shatama was my landlord who bought the old Baird Hardware property. And this was a long hallway, and there was an alley here, and that hallway is a... 116 feet long and 25 feet wide, and it had all these shelves full of every conceivable piece of hardware that you could ever imagine. Um, bolts, nuts, you know, 
uh, every kind of size, whatever. Most of that was gone, but there was still enough of it to know what it had been in there, and we spent a long time getting all that stuff out of here and, and built a recording studio and several other things in here. And uh, this is the seventh iteration of Mirror Image, and it was so different that we gave it a whole new name, and <coughs> Heartwood Soundstage. And what it's all about, really, is, is our love of music, and it's our way of hoping to find other people who are kindred spirits about music and come here and listen to music well by cool people, except tonight, because <laughs> they're just indulging me, because I'm one of the owners. Um, is Dave back yet? Yes. Okay. That's Dave Malosh behind the mixing board, who's uh, who covers uh, a multitude of responsibilities, and uh, as we all do. This is Jan here working the camera. I can't see who's back there. I know it's Susanna and. I can see you. That's it. Who else? Eliza. Oh, Eliza. Okay. Sorry, it's too bright to see, and I'm too. I'm, much, I'm trying to be the band tonight, which is hard to do when you're also the producer and the owner and the guy that worries about everything, but I digress. Um, we'll introduce the other members of the band, but probably you've been sitting there. We should do something more exciting than talk. So...
Rob Rothschild on the drums, Richard Basil on the bass. something entirely different and we've had such a great time doing that. Thank you. Me too. This one started out as a cha-cha. <laughs> <laughs> well, that may not be true. <laughs> Compulsive knob disorder.
We have Michael Derry, the, pro the professor of guitar. Amazing. Back here in the back, we have Joshua Pearsall kind of singing and playing the piano for us. Over on the end, we have Samara Gullibuck, the awesome Samara Gullibuck. I think we got everybody. All right. These are all people who played on this record that, that's uh, for sale out in the lobby. And by the way, if all the money is going to Sustainable Cambodia if you... So, you know, if you want to get one, take one, give what you like. goes to a wonderful cause, and uh, we're honored to help. In fact, if you go out there, you're going to see a bunch of stuff on that merch table. Please do not leave anything here. Take it with you. If you want to give a donation, we're so happy. If you don't, take stuff. T-shirts, CDs, take it with you, please. We, we want you to take this room. home and listen to it. <laughs> it's the new business model for the music <laughs> yes, industry. <laughs> It's for a good cause. <laughs> However short-lived it may be. <laughs> you pay a bunch of money to give it away. That's it. walk away.
So one of the things I like about Earl and Mary is they are write in a lot of different styles. As you will hear, so as you have heard already, <coughs> so we're kind of milking that country vein a little bit here, and we got the personnel to do it with, with Michael down there on dobro and banjo, and Jacob on fiddle here. Jacob has done a lot of studio work, and he's always a professional and great to work with, and a nice guy and really good. Too. And blushing. So I wrote this song a long time ago, and Mary and I went out and played it at a party, and it was out by a big bonfire, and we played it, and this guy came up to me and said, man, I love this song. You're going to be a great star in country music. And I want to tell you that his last prediction was that Hillary Clinton would be president, so <laughs> he was not real good at making predictions. What if we're not true? <laughs> <coughs> now we're alone. We got some time to talk it over. I know it's hard to say the thing. On your mind, but we can't go on this way, hurting each other. So we got to say goodbye just one more time. Well, I was there.
Jacob Lawson, everybody. So we are the Ironics, and the the ironic thing about that song is, those were what was said. That those words were said to me, not me saying them to somebody else. And I wrote them down and made a song out of it. So now we're going to bring out local legend and my one of my favorite singers of all time, Mr. Don Dale. <laughs> These guys should practice that one. These guys should play together. <laughs> yeah, we should. Hey, this is a great, uh, great occasion, a great um, thing y'all are doing. I had no idea I'm in the band. They didn't tell me it was a benefit. Um, but hey, more power to you. Oh. Yeah, we just assumed. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, this is a song we're all wrote called Fruits and Vegetables. It's about dieting. I think we're good. Okay. Welcome back, baby, from your little soiree. I said, oh, welcome back, baby, from your little soiree. You've been gone so long that I'm a new man today. When you walked right out that door, I had to change the way I dined. Now I stumble to the kitchen to see what I can find. Since you left me, baby, I'm in a vegetative state of mind. I'm eating fruit and vegetables. I'm eating fruit you got your cherries on your strawberries and vegetables. For shot with your carrot stick is nice. Ain't no substitute for fruit and vegetables. Drink one to my health. 
disagree. You drove off in my caddy, you wouldn't let me ride. Got yourself a sugar daddy and you put me out to dry. You always bake the chicken when you know I like it fried. Love you rotten apples, you ain't got to try. I'm eating fruit. Meditated too. I've been thinking long and hard that I can't make no sense about you. So I keep on coming back to my vegetative point of view. I'm sticking with my diet, it's very good for me. Banana coladas and Long Island iced tea. A Bloody Mary with the celery and lime Before you know it, I'm feeling so fine John David. Hey, we threw in the extra ending on that one just for fun. So I want to give a shout out to my Red Hawk Nation boys. Good evening. Now that I take my shirt off. <laughs> So has anybody out there ever been in love? <laughs> anybody? You want to go ahead and put your hand up? No. <laughs> anybody out there ever been in love only one time in their life? <laughs> you will have no idea what this song is about. <laughs> and I have no idea how to play it. <laughs> uh, you know, that's the issue with uh, recording something and then you play all these parts and then there it is to confront you with, hey, remember this? No. <laughs> I've, oh, I've forgotten more parts than I've ever recorded. <laughs> uh, sorry, tuning. Should we talk to our friends in Cambodia? Hey, everybody, it's hey, early morning Cambodia. there. Thanks for getting up early. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you're having a good time. So I just want to mention that I, I met Richard Allen 40, about 40 years ago. Probably it was April 1978, because what happens in April is you have to file taxes. And uh, I had started this record store. And much to my surprise, it became successful. And. Um, there I was confronted with the prospect of filing a business return. So uh, I had met this other guy over at, that was working at Chapter 3 Records. And his name was Richard. And I heard he was an accountant, or he was studying accounting, or something like that. So I went, hey, I went, hey Richard, you seem like a cool guy. <laughs> you could help me with my taxes. And he has been helping me ever since. And I love the guy dearly, and I love his wife, Susan, as much or even more. <laughs> Don't tell him. 
And I, don't, I also want to shout out to my wife, Nancy. I don't know if you're here, if you made it, if you're home. She's here. And tomorrow is uh, our 34th wedding anniversary. Uh, <laughs> So we make kids <laughs> Nancy's been a very forgiving person. I love Nancy. Did I ruin the mood? No. This song is I not for you, job. Bob, but we're going to do it anyway. Yeah. Switching gears, Stephen. <laughs> I've been trying every day, morning, noon, and night, looking for some answers, knowing the same right, only some memories coming from the past, and I spend my It's like Cannot come to reason how we landed here. Apart from everything we need, all that we hold dear. When you look into my eyes, you see my hopes are dashed. If you
that's probably what a better one <laughs> to mention my anniversary with. <laughs> a fair amount of time rehearsing these songs, especially Richard and I, and uh, one day we were sitting there and uh, I said, no, you got any songs? And he, he said, yeah, I got this one. And he took my guitar and he played this for me and I said, we need to do this in the concert, so I can't sing it, so Josh is going to come up and sing Josh Pierce Hall.
And I do want to say that it is a delight and a pleasure to share the stage with Mr. Richard Bassett.
We're going to sing a hippie song, so I thought I'd go ahead and deck on out. This is kind of a hippie church, at least this is some, a, some this of us. participation <laughs> thing, though, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. So uh, there's going to be a place in this song where it says, a chorus rises from the crowd, and they all say, not yet. And so when the chorus rises, and the chorus, that's you, says, not yet. And I'm going to point at you. And this is going to go on the tape, so you're going to have to be this on there. Song, this is a song with instructions in the lyric. Yes. <laughs> so everybody say, not yet. Not yet. That's it. it. <coughs> I'm just going to put a disclaimer in because I, I have to play the bad guy in this song. <laughs> you chose to play the bad guy in this song. We thought he was perfect for it. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it chose you. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, I just picture the cartoon or the video of this sh of this song, and there's it's you know the classic uh, Warner Brothers cartoon where there's the guy and there's the angel over here and the devil over there, right, you know, whispering in each ear. I'm the angel. All you guys that know me, you know I'm the angel, that's right. Walks I'm like an angel. And he's modest, too. <laughs> uh, what tempo are we playing this in? <laughs> I've been so in sync with you. Hey, oh, my la la. Hey, oh, my la la. Hey, oh, my la la. I've been so in seeds of peace everywhere I can. They should flower in the fields and cover up this land. But every time I think that peace is a sure bet, a chorus rises from the crowd and they Disagreements turn to perfect race. But when that peace gets half a chance, I think that it will say, Chorus rises from the crowd, and they all say, Not yet. Hey, oh, my la Hey, oh, my la Hey, oh, my la Hey, oh, my la I'd sure love to shake your hand and put this hate aside. There's still one thing about you that I cannot abide. I believe a different way than you and all your kin. And when it's only over, when I finally win. to the hypocrites everyone but me my god has a different name and, and there's only one and i will have to place the blame until my war is won so i've been sowing seeds of peace everywhere i can they should flower in the fields and cover up this land but every time i think that peace is a sure bet Chorus rises from the crowd, and they all say, not hey, oh, la, la. Hey, oh, la, la. Just admit that I am right and give me what I ask, then we could live together and put aside the past. Cause my tradition is the one that everyone should know, 
and yours is just a fairy tale, and you should let it go. So I keep sowing songs of peace in every single place. They should make the disagreements turn to perfect grace. But when that peace gets half a chance, and I think that it is sad, the chorus rises from the crowd and they all say, Not yet. Let's stop saying, Not yet. Just stop saying, Not yet. We'll be back in a few minutes. Go out there and get some of that merch. We got another set to play, so come back. Thanks for coming and supporting this great cause. Thanks to Richard and Susan and everybody in Sustainable Cambodia. And thanks to you. Thanks to you.
this is the last video of our trip to Cambodia. We're excited to share our story about our experience in Cambodia and our travel with a really incredible group called Sustainable Cambodia. We had a chance to visit schools and different communities and see the kind of work that they do uh, as part of our adventure, so we're excited to share that with you. The main site we went to was this school in the small town of Pursat. So the way it works in Cambodia is half of the students have school in the morning and the other half have school in the afternoon. Parents who have enough money pay private classes to their kids the half day when they don't have school. But if your parents don't have money to do that, well then you can only go to school half a day and that's usually not good enough. So what Sustainable Cambodia does at their main site in Pursat is provide tutoring classes in English, in math, and in computers that kind of complement the half day of school that you get at a public school. So because of our visit, they had organized this show where students would perform traditional Cambodian dances and it was really cute to watch. It was also really fun to play games with them because they like to hear native English speakers and they pick up on some of our slang words and our mannerisms. So we played a lot of games where we each said different words and they said it the way that they hear it and then we'd say it the way that we say it like in America or in the UK or in Australia. So we had like three different accents going on with the group that was with us. But it was really fun to hear how everyone said the same word in a different way. So one of the things I found really interesting was all the uh, motivational signs that were scattered throughout the schools. It was actually really cool to watch and they're both in English and in Khmer. So then the uh, next thing that we did, which was really cool, was to go to the high school in Persat. And we had an incredible welcome over there with hundreds of students lined up on both sides of the alley and clapping as we were walking. It was absolutely incredible. <laughs> Sustainable Cambodia there financed the uh, computer lab. Yeah, the computer lab is really an incredible training ground for these kids to learn how to code. They learned how to type in English and to write computer code, and it was very well attended. There were kids at every computer, and computers seemed to work well, and there was a lot of uh, easy access to them. And that's going to be really important as they go off and start careers in the uh, computer industry. The other thing I found really cool was the parking lot where you can see that half of the students come to school with bicycles and the other half come to school with scooters. After visiting a couple of sites in Pursat proper, we got a chance to travel the countryside and go visit schools in remote villages. And one of the
Okay, so, um, whoa, there's some reverb. Whoa, delay, delay, delay. Test, test. That's not the, uh, check, check. Oh, that's the video. Turn the video off. Hello. Hey, thanks for coming back. We saved all the best stuff for the second set.
catastrophe occurred. Apparently, my love for you has now become absurd. Suddenly, the universe is turning upside down. I'm still stuck inside our world. I'm just spinning round. Nothing seems to help me. You're always on my mind. Oh, I'm looking for a good way out. When it comes to you, I'm fine. And even if I had the chance, I could get away. There's no place I'd rather be. I just want to stay here with you. Live the dream. Live the in my songs, she said, Daddy, all you're singing about is love and, and baby and all that. She said, you need to have a song with some other words. And so I wrote a song called Some Other Words. And we're going to play it for you here. But while we're doing it, I want to say thanks to my mom and my sister and my son and my daughter for being here tonight. Really cool. So nice to have them here. And more of my family. Two of the who came over to play with us. I hope you have an extended family because I'm tuning my 12 string. Oh, no. So this is where I tell my Alaska story. <laughs> this is an event here, boys and girls. Uh, you don't want to watch this. Sorry, sorry. You know, there's a T-shirt that has this photo on it. <laughs> So I went out there in the intermission, and there's a bunch of, one of those low stuff that's still out there. Right? Somebody needs to bring out a U-Haul and take some of that with them. This song has a unique picture of being on both the CDs that we have out there. And we put it on the first one, but we did a little remix and put it on the second one too and uh, got a few changes in it that I like. <coughs> it had some other words on it I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <it's Martin makes guitars in Mexico now. <laughs> but at least they're not owned by a bunch of corporate lawyers like Fender. I know this is a family show, but my wife gave me this, this note that said, stay up. I don't know what that means. It's supposed to be a reminder, which did not work. It didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> what? I wish. <laughs> When I wake up in the morning, I see the golden sky. There's only one thing that I want to do. I want to see your face smiling back at me, telling me what I already knew. 
Must be some other words, some other way, something I can do to let you know. There must be some other time, some other place, some other way to say so much more. You know, I keep looking everywhere I can. Just can't find it there. Words must be somewhere. I'm trying. Please help me, Mr. Dylan Webster Rose. What I need to say to tell you I tremble that I always remember everything about you, everything you do, every smile. Back for the ironics. You know, <coughs> what is ironic about this band? I'm, I'm not sure. Right? Nothing at all. That's what's so funny about it. <laughs> it's kind of ironic. Well, it's ironic, ironic that we're here, but <laughs> this show was supposed to be somewhere else, but it's here, and we're glad that it is. Thank you very much. Does, does anybody else remember the debate about the Alanis Morissette song? Yeah. Isn't it ironic whether it was really ironic or not? <laughs> was it? I think the consensus, is Brandy still here? He's an English professor. He could <laughs> explain irony to us. No, go ahead and play the song. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was stalling so his memory cells so would kick in. <laughs> <laughs> desires, but I never learn. I get close to the fire, and then I get burned. Broken to pieces and hurting inside. I pack up my feelings, and I run and hide. One thing that carries me through. I've got a thing.
Already too late, Bob. I'm doesn't know that I think about her when I fall asleep at night. She doesn't know that I dream about how everything could turn out so right. She doesn't know that I can't live without the way I feel when I see her smile. It drives me from across the room. I like the way he moves. I'd like to spend just a couple of days walking in another man's shoes. I'd like to take her to my favorite place. See the look up.
my personal favorite on the CD. I do want to welcome to the band for the second set, Ron Thomas, over there. Thank you, Ron. Ron Dace. Ron's an amazing bass player. Wait a minute, that man's an imposter. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. I'm going to have to assume the classical guitar position, because otherwise my hand doesn't move that far. Too much information. Just wanna do it again. And I will always depend on someday being with you again. You could have been a dream. I love to dream. Thank you. 
So Mary Goldberg, Josh Pearsall, Mary Robbins, killing it. Thank you very much. All right, let's lighten up. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, still another love song. What are we going to do? <laughs> Back to a little country thing. Fun playing rhythm guitar in this band. We got a thousand more songs. You want to buy out this one? Do this again, maybe. You're going to be here all night, folks, so <laughs> settle down. <laughs> Don't got nowhere to go. That's a sad thing. <laughs> Isn't this yeah. Friday night? <laughs> um, this is the place to be. I sit alone in the darkness, watch the stars up in the sky, and I watch without mercy as the time keeps rolling by, and the shiver runs right through me as the wind blows in the trees, in the soft Join. 
Jacob. Samara Golubuk. This is kind of a doo wop y sort of thing. Oh, yeah. A doo doo flop. It's better a doo wop than a doo flop. Anybody counting up brain parts? <laughs> <laughs> Once more with the right foot. Right foot. I transposed it twice. think of you, I think amazing, you say you don't think it's true, on this one thing, you can believe me, I was amazed by you. Nothing had ever touched me the way your love echoed in my heart. I could not know I would have to move on. And one of these days, I must start.
you I think a true love inside and out through and through tell you what, I've made a lot of bad mistakes in my life, and I've made a lot of bad decisions, but the one good decision I made is standing right here and having Mary Dollar for me. And I thank you for being here tonight, and doing this. you've been awesome. Okay, this, this song's a bit cryptic. I don't know who wrote this one. Not really lies. You're just learning how to compromise. In spite of it all, I now realize that you're leaving. I can see it in your eyes. You know I love you very much, but you choose to not see it as such. You fall.
So uh, we're going to ask our mascot, Pixel, to come up on stage for this song. Is she awake? This, by the way, is our last song. So I want to thank, uh, thank everybody on the stage for come on up. rehearsing as hard as we did. I hope it's, <laughs> well, sometimes it's obvious, I hope. And we want to thank everybody here for coming out and participating in sustainable Cambodia and reaching out to the world at large. So hello again if you're still watching in Cambodia. Thanks so much. Thanks so much to Richard and Susan and that amazing organization and what they do and all the people that support them. And thanks to Heartwood and all the people that work at Heartwood. Um. <laughs> Thank you, Bob McPeak, for making this happen. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Earl and Mary, who really made it happen. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So this song is called Peace in Our Time. It's another one that we wrote a while back in. Um, it's on another CD that's out there, but we've redone it and made something else out of it. And uh, it has much spookier chords now. Yeah, much cooler chords. But um, recently I got to go to a peace museum. Anybody ever been to a peace museum? What do you think is in a peace museum? Nothing. I mean, it's couple of pictures. I went, when I went, they had some quilts hanging up with peace signs on them. Uh, and I've been to war museums, too, and the, you know, the tanks and the guns and the lots of noise and films going around and people dying and screaming. And, uh, but when you think about it, what is peace? What is a sign of peace? I, I, I don't know. And, uh, I, there it is. <laughs> Thank you. Miles of days. That's why she's our mascot. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, take us home after that, baby. So many barriers to break down So many doors to pass through So many walls that stand between us And there's so much work to do We got to learn to live together
Thank you so much for being here tonight. We love you. We love all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you for these guys. You've been with this amazing band. Michael, Mike. Jacob, right here. Michael Derry, Bob, Joshua, Rob Rochelle, Ron Thomas, Tamara, and Pixel, who nailed it tonight. And Mary Robbins. Thank you so and much. And Earl Robbins, Earl Robbins, and Richard Allen and Susan Mastin, who are standing out there. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. As you're going out, supplies? Yes. Yes. <laughs>